Hey, how's it going? In this video, we're talking about ADHD medications and more specifically, stimulant dosing limits. Now, with most medications, to figure out the best dose for a patient is a collaborative process. And this is where stimulant dosing presents a unique challenge. That's because these medications are inherently rewarding, which makes it difficult to take a purely collaborative approach and let the patient guide the dosing. On the other hand, the safe upper limits are not always clear, despite the strict Schedule II status the DEA has placed on these medications. In this video, we're gonna look at where to draw the lines and where the risk of dosing is too high. So to get started, what's wrong with going higher on the dose? A higher dose raises the risk of abuse and diversion. And importantly, it raises the risk of cardiovascular problems. When patients are young, they may not be thinking of hypertension, stroke, and myocardial infarction, but these are real risks that are important to take into consideration. Importantly, higher doses can worsen cognition, either by disrupting sleep, or causing a hyper-focused state that makes it difficult for the patient to shift gears and change tasks. We also know that other psychiatric symptoms, psychosis, mania, anxiety, are more likely to increase as we increase the dose. When patients with narcolepsy took high doses of these stimulants, approximately double the FDA maximum, it raised the risk of psychosis 12-fold, psychiatric hospitalization threefold, and substance abuse fourfold. And animal models point to these problems, particularly with the amphetamines. Studies with baboons have shown brain damage on elevated doses of amphetamines, equaling about 60 milligrams per day and above in human doses. If you want access to a really helpful chart that goes over the max daily dose of all these different medications, head on over to the carlatreport.com slash stimulant limits. So let's start with the amphetamines. The FDA sets the maximum for Adderall either IR or XR, at a dose of 40 milligrams per day for adult ADHD. But they do allow up to 60 milligrams per day for more severe cases of ADHD and for narcolepsy. That 40 to 60 milligrams max was derived from a large trial of adult ADHD looking at three different doses of Adderall, 20, 40, and 60 milligrams, where they found no significant difference in terms of their safety and efficacy. There was some evidence that people with more severe ADHD did better on the higher doses of 40 to 60 milligrams, but that finding was limited due to the fact that it was secondary data of the study. We recommend thinking of the dose in three different zones. There's the safe zone below 40 milligrams, there's the gray zone, 40 to 60 milligrams, and then there's the danger zone, which is above 60 milligrams. Now, going up to 60 milligrams per day might be justified when the symptoms are severe, but here you're really gonna wanna document the presence of these symptoms on the mental status exam, and verify that the ADHD is affecting the patient's functioning. We're not aware of any research justifying a dose above 60 milligrams per day, which would land us in the danger zone. One caveat is that higher doses may be justified when a longer duration is needed. Mydeus, which is a very extended release version of Adderall, has a maximum dose of 50 milligrams. But this leads to similar plasma levels as Adderall XR 40 milligrams because the dose is spread over 16 hours instead of 12. Now, whenever you extend the duration, it's important to make sure the patient's getting adequate sleep so that they're not relying on their stimulant for symptoms of sleep deprivation. For methylphenidate, the FDA gives a clear maximum that varies slightly by the formulation. That max is 60 milligrams per day for methylphenidate instant release, brand name Ritalin, but higher doses are allowed for products with longer durations. Here we're thinking about Concerta, which you can go up to 72 milligrams over 12 hours, and Enhancia, which you can go up to 100 milligrams over 16 hours. And a few of the methylphenidate products have a lower dose cap because more of the drug is absorbed. These include the transdermal formulation, so Daytrana is given at half the usual methylphenidate dose, and the orally disintegrating tablets. So Contempla ODT is dosed at 86% of the usual dose, and then Adzanese ODT at 65%. Let's move on to dosing in the elderly. We have to keep in mind adult ADHD is a relatively new concept and geriatric ADHD is even newer. The middle-aged patients who started stimulants 20 years ago are now entering their retirement years with little data to guide them. That's because there are no controlled trials in patients with ADHD after age 50. But there are observational studies that suggest that older adults continue to benefit, although at lower doses. For example, average doses of 30 milligrams per day for methylphenidate and 10 milligrams per day for amphetamine and dextroamphetamine. Now, there are at least three reasons to consider lowering the dose as the patient ages. Older adults are more susceptible to the cardiovascular effects and possibly the neurotoxic effects. In animal models, the same dose of amphetamine reached twice the level in the brains of older rats compared to younger ones. 
This might suggest that older adults may not need as high as a dose to achieve the same response. So what are the important practical takeaways? Whenever you go above 40 milligrams per day of Adderall, you're going above the gray zone. Before taking those steps, you need to verify that the ADHD is causing significant functional impairment, and it's super important to address other causes, like sleep deprivation or mood symptoms. Evidence shows that it can be helpful to augment with guanfacine or try switching to a different amphetamine mixture. Whenever you're getting to the higher doses, you should really be trying to track these symptoms with a rating scale, such as the adult ADHD self-report scale. I like the conclusion from our recent research update. So our takeaway is that higher than normal stimulant doses may slightly reduce ADHD symptoms, but they come with higher risks and higher side effects. Stimulants aren't the only helpful thing in ADHD. Before pushing to higher doses, we need to make sure the patient is doing the things that help. Exercise, a healthy diet, we need to make sure that comorbid conditions are under control, the patient's in therapy, and consider adding non-stimulant medications. What's the CARLAT verdict here? With stimulants, it's best to stay within the FDA-approved limits. Slightly higher doses of mixed amphetamine salts may be needed for patients with severe symptoms, but lower doses are likely safer, and in the elderly, just as effective. If you found this video helpful, definitely head on over to thecarlatreport.com and consider subscribing to our newsletter. Thanks for watching. Yes.